Covering an area of 110 acres and with a population of about 1,000, the Vatican is the smallest country in the world. Located within Rome, its physical size does not proportionally represent its global influence and power. The Vatican, home to the Pope, serves as the administrative center of the Catholic Church, the world's oldest and largest continuously functioning religious institution. This mysterious country, host to many dark secrets and legends, is also a focal point for conspiracy theorists. Beneath the cobblestone streets of the Vatican lies a history spanning thousands of years. Although experts claim that only about 5% of the city's underground has been discovered, excavations continue to reveal treasures that give us a better understanding of the culture's ancient segments. Today, we will delve into some spine-chilling facts about the Vatican. Enjoy! The Vatican Necropolis is a true city of the dead and one of the darkest aspects of the world-renowned Basilica. Located directly beneath the St. Peter's Basilica, it is also considered the final resting place of St. Peter, one of the Twelve Apostles. Above ground, the structure dazzles with its beautiful artworks, mesmerizing frescoes, and a history spanning centuries, while beneath, five layers hide ruins that date back to the earliest days of the Roman Empire. Interestingly, not just leaders, high-ranking officials, or nobles are buried here but also ordinary citizens and slaves. The double-layered cemetery encompasses roughly 90% of the time when the Roman Empire was in power, from 27 BC to AD 476. There's even a hidden church beneath the basilica, and atop it is another church from the 12th century. It can be said that the St. Peter's Basilica is a relatively recent addition built upon a much older history. Even today, it remains a major cultural hub and has long served as a sacred site. The Vatican Obelisk in St. Peter's Square is an ancient monument that traces its origins thousands of years back to Egypt. Stolen from Heliopolis, Egypt, during the bloody reign of Caligula, one of Rome's most infamous emperors, the obelisk has an even darker history. To transport the structure, the Romans built a specially designed ship. Once brought to Rome, the obelisk stood at Caligula's Circus, where Christians were executed. After the circus was abandoned, the base of the obelisk was found still stained with the blood of Christians. In 1586, the monument was finally moved to the center of the square. Some say the obelisk once topped Julius Caesar's tomb. When re-erected, the sphere atop the obelisk was found to be empty and is now on display at the Capitol Museum. Some believe that the current sphere atop the obelisk contains relics. The Grand Grimoire, dated between 1421 and 1522, is an ancient book of black magic. However, historians have not reached a consensus on when the first edition was published. Some claim its origins trace back to 1702, while others argue it's a 19th century fabrication. The introduction was supposedly written by Antonio Veneciana del Rabina, who reportedly took much of the information from King Solomon's original manuscripts. Many of the spells in the book are variations of the Key of Solomon or the Red Dragon. The text primarily covers demonic summoning rituals. So, what does a black magic book have to do with the Vatican? Rumors suggest that an original copy is preserved somewhere in the archives. The veracity of these claims is debated, but considering that the Vatican archives host almost every religious text from around the world, it wouldn't be surprising. It seems reasonable for them to secretly keep a book that might contain Lucifer and grant someone the ability to make a pact with the devil. The Turin Shroud is believed to be a linen cloth that displays the imprint of a man's face. Theologians believe the shroud wrapped a man's body after his death, which is why the impression of his face was left on the fabric. The shroud first emerged in 1354 and quickly became one of the most legendary religious artifacts. Since 1578, it has been held in the Royal Chapel of the Turin Cathedral in northern Italy. However, its authenticity is still debated. Tests conducted in 1988 suggested the shroud originated in the Middle Ages, emerging approximately 1,200 years after the supposed date of the man's death. However, recent claims from a researcher named Barbara working in the Vatican's secret archives mentioned that there are writings on the shroud that turn it into a kind of death certificate. Barbara stated that words found on the fabric are written in Greek, Hebrew, and Latin, indicating that it covered Jesus of Nazareth. There are now suggestions that the name of a priest is written on the cloth in multiple languages, and that the body was then wrapped in the shroud for burial. 
Is the Turin Shroud truly a death certificate, or are these just stories perpetuated by the Vatican? What are your thoughts on this? The escape tunnels, the Pasetto di Borgo, might look like any other stone wall in the Vatican from the outside. However, few people know that this structure, stretching for 800 meters to Castel Sant'Angelo, was once a secret passage used to ensure the Pope's safety. Commissioned by Pope Nicholas III in 850, its construction was not completed until about 650 years later, during the reign of Pope Alexander VI, which began in 1492. Alexander, notorious for favoring his infamous offspring, completed the tunnel just in time. In 1494, when Italy was invaded by the French, the Pope escaped through these tunnels. Its last known use was in 1527 when Pope Clement VII had to flee from mutinous troops of the Holy Roman Empire who, not having been paid, revolted and advanced on Rome. The Pope was among the few high-ranking officials who managed to escape due to the secret tunnel. In 2000, the Roman Catholic Church renovated the tunnels to commemorate the Jubilee year. In recent years, the Church has opened the tunnels to visitors for a limited time each summer. Some believe that evidence of the Devil's existence is hidden deep within the Vatican. These are the same people who believe that the Vatican conceals evidence of extraterrestrial entities and subscribe to other perplexing conspiracy theories. Some even believe that the Vatican and its gates are controlled by Satan and that all of them are puppets of the Devil. Of course, all of these are nothing but exaggerated conspiracy theories. The only church with a depiction of the Devil is the Holy Trinity Church, built to celebrate Napoleon's defeat. The depiction of the devil in this UK-based church is not as you might think. Artist Paul Fire depicted the devil in his work as a massive black figure with huge white wings tangled in electrical cables. The sculpture, situated in a holy setting and representing one of the biggest enemies of faith, is quite striking. Made from wax, aluminum, rubber, ground materials, and feathers, the work perfectly captures the image of the dark-souled angel banished from heaven and has a very simple effect. Of course, this can be qualified not as proof of the devil's influence in the Vatican but merely as a disturbing work of art. Speaking of eerie sculptures, there's a very unsettling statue in the Vatican. In 1977, an artist named Pericle Fasican crafted a statue named Resurrection from bronze and copper. The sculpture is approximately 20 meters long and 7 meters high and serves as the backdrop for the Vatican's Paul VI audience hall. Over time, this hall became the source of many conspiracy theories, primarily due to this terrifying statue. While the sculpture was made to depict Jesus' resurrection, it appears as if reactive black sticky substances and rising snakes are intertwined. The hall itself, where the Pope holds all his weekly meetings, seems not fitting for St. Peter's Square. The statue, believe it or not, leaves a shock effect on those who see it for the first time. The statue's significant position in the hall is intentional, the sculptor wanted to remind all listeners that they should not be afraid of the challenges, but rather embrace the potential adversity and experience the joy of resurrection, even if the world is thrown into a terrible chaos and storm of death. Between 1870 and 1929, not a single pope stepped outside the Vatican. During these years, every pope became a prisoner in their own small kingdom, marking one of the strangest times in Vatican history. Finally, on May 13, 1871, the guarantee law issued by the Italian government came into force. This law was an attempt by Italy to solve the throne issue. The government was disturbed by the pope's significant influence and power over the people, and with this law, aimed for the papacy to be just a subject of Italy and not a sovereign matter. They promised to treat the Pope with the dignity of a king, but in return, he would be subject to strict Italian laws. Starting with Pope Pius IX, who died in 1878, five popes locked themselves in the Vatican Palace and never left. The Pope was so furious that he excommunicated the King of Italy and condemned him to hell. This situation lasted until 1929 when Pope Pius XI made a new deal with Benito Mussolini. They agreed that the Vatican City would remain its own country, as it still is today. St. Peter's bones were displayed for the first time in history ten years ago, on the orders of Pope Francis, the 266th Bishop of Rome. They believe that the box contains the bones of St. Peter, the first Bishop of Rome, and this was a significant event at the time. 
Before 2013, no pope had ever definitively stated that the eight pieces of bone hidden beneath the Nazili district actually belonged to St. Peter. Despite so many years passing, we still cannot definitively say whether these bones belong to the Apostle Peter. In 1968, Pope Paul VI stated that the connection seemed plausible, but he couldn't provide concrete evidence to support the claim. By 2013, the Vatican simply let the matter go, literally letting events take their course. To be honest, we don't even know if they are the bones of that ancient saint. The author of The Vatican's Ears book, Bruna Bartolini, pointed out that no pope has ever allowed scientists to examine the bones, probably because they might not want to know or reveal the truth. In 1939, while archaeologists were excavating the catacombs of the Basilica of St. Peter to bury Pope Pius XI, they discovered a coffin with the Greek inscription, Peter is here. There were also secret journals claiming that there was a millennium-old curse on St. Peter's grave. It was believed that those who opened the grave would face the worst misfortune possible. This might have influenced the Pope's decisions over the years. In September 1978, Pope John Paul I was elected to the papacy. Mysteriously, he died suddenly only 33 days later. What's strange is the contradictory reports about his unexpected death. There were rumors surrounding his death, and to this day, no one has definitively learned what happened to one of the shortest-serving popes in church history. We only have numerous conspiracy theories, the problem being the lack of sufficient evidence to confirm which one is true. One theory suggests that those responsible for the Vatican Bank, known to be extremely corrupt, were concerned that Pope John Paul I would disrupt their activities. They supposedly assassinated him to protect their wealth. Corruption documents related to the bank were confirmed, and we know that the head of one of the world's most powerful financial institutions, the Vatican Bank, was deeply involved in corruption. Bishop Paul Marcinkus was accused of being complicit and of losing roughly three and a half billion dollars in 1982 with Banco Ambrosiano. It also came to light that one of the bishop's criminal associates was bank director Roberto Calvi, a member of an illegal Italian Masonic lodge. Calvi, involved in financial corruption, was found hanging under a bridge in London in 1982, just weeks after the scandal was made public. Though his death was ruled a suicide, many conspiracy theories surround it. From an outsider's perspective, it does seem possible that the Pope was murdered to protect the bank, especially as the scandal reached monumental proportions. What do you think is the most terrifying aspect of the Vatican? In the heart of Vatican City lie mysteries that have spanned decades. From bones believed to be those of St. Peter to the sudden, unexplained death of Pope John Paul I in 1978, the Vatican has been shrouded in intrigue and speculation. Questions arise, what truths are held within the Vatican's walls? Can we ever truly uncover the depth of these mysteries? But one thing is clear, the Vatican remains one of the world's most enigmatic places, attracting both the faithful and those curious about its secrets. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to Mysterious Discoveries for more intriguing content. Until our next mystery, take care and thank you for watching.